Whenever we think of EV, we think of Tesla or BYD, but we never think of India. Why is that? Because only last year, we sold 20 lakh electric vehicles in one year. Meanwhile, in the US, only 15 lakh. So what's truly shocking is that China took nearly 10 years to build their EV empire. Tesla is still struggling in the US after 20 years. So while everyone is obsessed over Teslas and BYD, India silently has conquered the EV market in a way that nobody saw coming. Now you will say that Indian EVs aren't better than Tesla or cheaper than BYD. Then how did India win the EV war? Well, we did something so brilliant, so different, that it's about to change who actually controls the future of EV in the entire world. So in this video, we will show you how India just pulled off the greatest strategic move in the history of EV and why Tesla, BYD and every other EV companies needs to pay attention. Section 1, The Revolution So what exactly did India do that was so genius? When Western media talks about India's EV numbers, they immediately go to electric cars. Oh, India only sold 99,000 electric cars in 2024. That's way behind China's 11 million. And then they write India off as falling behind in the EV race, except they're looking at the wrong numbers entirely. Out of the 2 million EVs sold in India last year, only 5% are cars. The remaining 95% are two-wheelers and three-wheelers. These vehicles carry more people in India every single day than all the Tesla ever sold combined. And that is where the real game is. India just became the world's largest electric three-wheeler market. Not just in Asia, not just among the developing countries, but globally. They sold 700,000 electric auto rickshaws in 2024 alone, beating China for the first time in EV history. That is a 57% market penetration. In India, if you get into an auto rickshaw today, it's more likely to be an electric than not. When was the last time you could say that about any vehicle category in any major economy? Meanwhile, China has barely 15% electric penetration in three-wheelers and in electric two-wheelers. India sold 1.2 million units in 2024. That's a 33% growth rate year on year that has created the most competitive EV ecosystem globally. 220 companies are all fighting for market share. This is what the master stroke actually is. In India, there are 185 two-wheeler per thousand people compared to just 35 cars per thousand people. So we realize that if we want to power India by electric vehicles, we need to target the two-wheeler market first. We looked at the global EV playbook, luxury cars, premium feature, high-end buyers, and said, this is not our game. Instead, we electrified the vehicles that actually matter to our 1.5 billion population. The daily commute, the last mile delivery, the affordable mobility that keeps our economy running. The Indian government planned this success, funded it, and executed it with surgical precision. Section 2 the 29,000 crore master plan. Okay, all these stats are cool, but how did we actually pull off all this? What was the master plan behind this? This is where the Indian government strategy come into play. Firstly, when the government wanted people to buy electric vehicles, they gave discount to make EVs cheaper than petrol vehicles. In 2024, India launched PM eDrive with a 10,900 crore just for EV subsidies. That's a $1.3 billion over two years. So now here's the smart part. Most countries give these subsidies to people who are buying expensive electric cars. America gives tax breaks to people buying $50,000 Teslas. Europe does the same for luxury EVs. And India said, we will do this differently. They're giving subsidies for 1.5 lakh electric scooters that regular people can actually afford. Now that is genius when you think about it. That's how you get the masses to spend the money on EV. Otherwise, only the rich ones buy EVs. So now, what about the remaining money from the 29,000 crore? Well, they added 18,100 crore for something called the PLI scheme. Basically, this is to build 50 gigawatt hours of battery manufacturing in India. To give you an idea of how massive this is, that's enough battery capacity for about 5 million electric scooters every single year. And why does this matter? I'll tell you why. China controls nearly 80% of all battery production globally. 80%. But India looked at that and said, not anymore. So now India will try to break that monopoly. So they committed 18,100 crore. 
that's a 3.5 billion dollar just to break china's battery monopoly and while all this is happening they're also securing raw materials you know how china dominates batteries batteries need lithium india just signed deals to mine lithium in argentina their first ever overseas mining project argentina chile bolivia these three countries have over half the world's lithium while everyone else was busy with trade wars India quietly locked down lithium supply deals for the next few decades. And the results? India's battery demand is about to explode from 4 gigawatt hours to 139 gigawatt hours by 2035. That's a 35 times bigger in just 12 years. India is making sure they control every step of making those batteries. This is economic chess. India looked at China's EV dominance and said, we are not going to beat you at your game. We are going to create a completely different game where we are the champions. So now that two wheelers and battery manufacturing was looked after, India chose to focus on something that most countries ignore, public transport. We are electrifying over 38,000 buses across Indian cities. You might think, okay, that's nice, but what's the big deal? Let me tell you, every single day, millions of people are riding these electric buses, Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore. They're experiencing how quiet electric vehicles are, how smooth they are, and how they don't smell like diesel fumes. This is actually changing how people think about transportation. Millions of Indians are experiencing clean, reliable public transport for the first time in their lives. You know, studies show that switching Delhi's entire bus fleet to electric could prevent 1,370 deaths from air pollution every year. So you understand it is not just about EVs anymore. It's also about improving the country in all aspects. But don't worry, India isn't planning to keep all this EV goodness for themselves. They have some plans that are about to completely flip the global EV market. Section 3, the export strategy. Now it's not all good, obviously. India exports do face one significant challenge. Tata Motors, India's EV king, only exports 1.4% of India's total automotive exports. 1.4%. Mahindra, only 2%. That's it. Meanwhile, Maruti, Suzuki and Hyundai control 66% of India's automotive exports. So, India has mastered the domestic EV markets but is still building its global export capabilities. However, there is a bigger picture here that changes everything. Remember those 29,000 crores that government is spending? They're not just building the EV ecosystem for domestic consumption. So major Indian companies have announced over 10,000 crores in investments specifically for export-focused EV manufacturing. Now global companies are taking notice. Suzuki Motor Corporation just announced that India will be their global manufacturing hub for exporting EVs to 100 countries. Maruti Suzuki plans to produce over 250,000 electric vehicles by 2027, with 60 to 70% being exported to markets including Japan. Hyundai is targeting to make India their largest export hub outside South Korea. So this strategy is brilliant when you think about it. While China fights Tesla and European brands in the premium EV space, India is perfecting electric vehicles that cost 1.5 lakh to 5 lakhs. That's about $2,000 to $6,000. Which market is bigger? Rich people in America and Europe buying luxury EVs or 3 billion people in Asia, Africa, Latin America who need affordable mobility? The real battle is in premium cars. It's practical mobility. And this battle is going to decide who controls transportation for the next 3 billion people entering the middle class. So China has manufacturing scale and cost advantage. They can produce electric vehicles cheaper than almost anyone. But India has something China doesn't. They understand emerging market needs better than anyone. See, Chinese EVs are designed assuming people have garages, stable electricity, and access to charging stations. But Indian EVs are designed for people who park on streets, face power cuts, and need to charge using whatever electric outlet they can find. Indian EVs are being designed with removable batteries, so no charging infrastructure needed. You can actually take your battery home, charge it overnight with a regular plug, and swap it back in. And this makes EVs accessible in areas where building charging stations would be challenging or expensive. And that difference matters when you're trying to sell to markets in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. While Tesla fights for premium market share and China builds charging networks for urban elites, 
India is building EV infrastructure that works for everyone else. The question isn't whether India can actually catch up to China's car numbers. The question is whether China can catch up to India's practical mobility solutions before India exports them globally. But you know what? India's export ambition faced one significant challenge that's worth understanding. Section 4. The Real Competition Everyone thinks India's main challenge is competition with global brands. But the real challenge is getting Indians to actually adopt electric vehicles at the same rate other countries have managed. India sells massive volumes. 1.2 million electric two-wheelers because India has a huge two-wheeler market overall. But in terms of getting people to actually switch from petrol to electric, India is struggling. In China, 35% of people buying two-wheelers choose electric. In India, only 5% make that switch. So India has a scale but hasn't convinced its own people to go electric at the same rate China has. And there are two big reasons for this. First, charging infrastructure. There is currently one charging station for every 182 EVs in India. The ideal ratio should be one station for every 6 to 20 vehicles. People are worried about getting stuck without power, especially for long travels. Second, the after-sales service network isn't ready. EV spare parts are limited, skilled technicians for EV repairs are scarce, and people, they don't believe that they can actually maintain an electric vehicle long term. Traditional repair shops are slowly adapting, but most people still don't feel confident about servicing their EVs. This creates a trust gap. Indians love the idea of electric vehicles, but they are not convinced that infrastructure can support them. The opportunity is enormous though. If India can actually get its adoption rate up to even 15%, the volumes would be unprecedented because the market is so massive. India's 2030 target is 30% EV penetration. Right now, they are at 5%. But if India can solve these infrastructure and trust issues, they won't just hit the target, they will become the template for global adoption. Because the country that cracks mass adoption first wins everything. So here's the thing that everyone misses about EV days. China has the factories, Tesla has the technology, Europe has the charging networks, but India has something none of them have the blueprint for mass market electric mobility. When those 3 billion people in Asia, Africa and Latin America decide to go electric, they're not going to buy Teslas. Of course, they can't afford 50 lakh cars. They're going to buy what India would have perfected. 1.5 lakh electric scooters with swappable batteries that work without fancy infrastructure. India didn't just enter the EV market. They built the EV market that actually matters.